This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. To see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Let's begin the sample. This is a diagram of a Hyper-V cluster that we're actually going to build. So with clustering Hyper-V, the whole goal is high availability for our virtual machines. When we have standalone hosts, most likely our virtual machines are living on the internal disks of the Hyper-V host. If there's a problem with that host and it goes down for whatever reason, you know, bad processor or whatever, then all those virtual machines on that host go down as well. So the risk increases greatly when we're using virtual machines. We're not just losing one machine, we're losing all the virtual machines that are on that host. And that means a lot of downtime and that's normally not acceptable. So with a Hyper-V cluster, our virtual machines are going to live on shared storage, meaning that both of our Hyper-V hosts in the cluster, or all the hosts in our cluster, which are also called nodes, can see that shared storage. So the virtual machines live on this shared storage, which in our case is going to be an iSCSI SAN. If the virtual machine is currently running, let's say on PHX Hyper-V02 here, let's say this host goes down, then that virtual machine can automatically be restarted on PHX Hyper-V01 because it can see that storage where the virtual machine files live. So it's not 100% uptime, but the downtime only consists of the amount of time it takes to restart that virtual machine on another host, which is generally much, much better than the downtime of a host going down then having to fix that particular problem and then hopefully bring up the host. Now in a cluster, we have a lot of different options for our shared storage. It can, this can be a fiber channel SAN. We're going to use an iSCSI SAN. Uh, it could be a SAS array. So we could have uh, SCSI cables coming from our Hyper-V hosts going directly to the SAS array. This could be a scale-out file server. So we have a lot of different options. But the bottom line is all of our nodes in our cluster can see that shared storage. In addition to high availability in the event of a failure, we also have times when we have to perform maintenance on our hosts. Things like Windows updates or just hardware maintenance. Maybe we're updating firmware or drivers, things that require a reboot. Well, with a standalone host, that can be pretty difficult because if we have to reboot the host, normally we have to shut down all the virtual machines on that host, which again means downtime. We might have to find a maintenance window that can be difficult or even not possible to do. But with a cluster, we can very easily migrate the virtual machines from one host to the other host and then perform the maintenance, whether it be Windows updates, hardware uh, maintenance, reboot it, bring it back up, and then easily migrate those virtual machines back without any downtime. And with cluster-aware updating, we can run our Windows updates automatically. So the virtual machines can automatically be migrated over to the other node in our cluster, run our Windows updates, reboot, bring it back up. Virtual machines will be migrated from this node to the other one. Then this host will run Windows updates and reboot. And then the virtual machines can be rebalanced again. So that can happen automatically. In our Hyper-V cluster, we're also going to build in a lot of other redundancies. So a big goal of high availability is eliminating single points of failure. So we're going to use teaming, multipath IO, ether channel and trunking, all sorts of different technologies so that if we have a failure at certain points, then it doesn't trigger a host failure. Because normally if we have a host failure, it does mean a little bit of downtime because those virtual machines have to be restarted on another host. And this is just one example of a Hyper-V cluster. Depending on the business's needs and budget, that can affect the type of cluster we have and where we have redundancy. But diagramming it is definitely a great way to visually see what, where are our single points of failure and then how can we eliminate those. So if we do have a failure, there's some sort of automatic failover and there's no downtime. So that is the ultimate goal.